This video is sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. Bronze and iron are metals that define the entire ages, from the Stone Age to the Bronze Age to the Iron Age. This linear historical scale of progression gives the impression that as bronze is superior to stone in the making of weapons and armour, so is iron inherently superior to bronze. But how does iron beat bronze? Why was it the better metal? Or was it? In order to continue our discussion, we need to first address what iron is and what bronze is in details. Hey noble ones, Metatron here. Atomic number 26, iron is a natural element with symbol Fe for ferrum in Latin. In its metallic state, iron is quite rare in the Earth's crust, its appearance being limited mostly to meteoritic deposits. Iron ores instead are very common and among the most abundant in the Earth's crust. Even during the Bronze Age, there were a few items crafted from meteoritic iron, but the smelting of iron was rather uncommon. In order to extract usable metal from iron ores, a furnace capable of reaching at least 1535 degrees Celsius or higher is needed. That's about 500 degrees higher than what is enough to smelt copper. That explains why, technologically speaking, smelting iron is more difficult, as it requires a specialized furnace. Bronze, on the other hand, is an alloy. It doesn't occur naturally. You cannot mine bronze. You have to artificially make it. Alloys are metallic compounds made up of one metal and one or more metal or non-metal element. In the case of bronze, it's a metal and metal combination. The two metals to make bronze are copper and tin, with copper being the main element. Bronze is one of the earliest metals known to man. The proportions of copper and tin varied widely in surviving artefacts, from 67 to 95% copper. By comparison, most modern bronze is 88% copper and 12% tin. Bronze, of course, is not the only copper-based alloy. For instance, another copper alloy was brass, made of copper with zinc. Modern usage has blurred the lines between brass and bronze. To avoid confusion, museums and historical texts tend to use the inclusive term copper alloy. In science and engineering, however, bronze and brass are defined according to their element composition. In the next section, we will discuss the different properties and characteristics of iron and bronze in order to understand what happens when we choose to make a helmet or a sword of iron instead of bronze, and why the shift from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age, namely the choice of iron as the main metal for war, ultimately happened. But before doing that, I'd like to talk about the sponsor that made this video possible, The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus is a very fitting sponsor for my channel and the kind of content I produce. It is a fantastic addition to my own personal academic research because it contains many courses taught by very knowledgeable professors about a wide range of topics, from history to maths, science and much more. Through your subscription you get access to a huge library of over 11,000 videos and when I started watching it I was rather impressed with both the quality of the production and the presentation. Since recently I've been watching a course called Origins of Great Ancient Civilizations by Dr. Kenneth Hearth, Professor of Classical and Byzantine History at Tulane University in New Orleans. The course contains 12 highly detailed video lectures. Highly recommended. I've particularly liked Lecture 9, The Collapse of the Bronze Age. One thing I liked about this video is the fact that the professor brings the perspective of a Roman historian into a topic such as the end of the Bronze Age, helping to fill in the gaps created by the lack of evidence of the period compared to the Roman world. Now The Great Courses Plus is giving you a great offer with a free trial and at the same time by subscribing to The Great Courses Plus you will be supporting the Metatron channel. Please visit thegreatcoursesplus.com slash metatron or click the link in the description below to start your free trial today.
bronze is reddish brown or very dull golden hard metal. Ionis it appears as lustrous metallic with a greyish tinge. Bronze is a non-magnetic metal. Iron instead was the first magnetic metal discovered by man. Bronze tends to be denser and a bit stronger than pure and wrought iron. Bronze is corrosion resistant and it doesn't rust. Upon exposure to air, bronze oxidizes but only on its outer layer. This patina, usually green, consists of copper oxide, which eventually becomes copper carbonate. The oxide layer protects the interior metal from further corrosion. However, if chlorides are present, as from seawater, copper chlorides form, which can cause bronze disease, a condition in which corrosion works through the metal and destroys it. But generally speaking, in the majority of cases, bronze is corrosion resistant. Iron instead corrodes easily. Rust is an iron oxide, a chemical compound composed of iron and oxygen formed by the reaction of iron and oxygen in the presence of water or air moisture. It provides no protection to the underlying iron, unlike the formation of the patina on copper surfaces. Leave it unattended long enough and any iron object will completely turn into rust. Ask Silent Hill for confirmation. So bronze does have some advantages over iron. So why the shift? As we have discussed, in order to make bronze, you need copper and tin. Now, in military terms, this means that you need to first find, control and mine copper deposits and tin deposits, which are rarely found near one another. Furthermore, tin is a relatively rare element in the Earth's crust, with about two parts per million. Compare that to iron, with about 50,000 parts per million, copper, with 70 parts per million, silver, with 0.1 parts per million, or gold, with 0.005. Ancient sources of tin were therefore rare, and the metal usually had to be traded over very long distances to meet demand in areas which lacked its deposits. Europe has very few sources of tin, so tin has had to be imported long distances from the known tin mining districts of antiquity. For example, the Ore Mountains along the modern border between Germany and Czech Republic, the Iberian Peninsula, Brittany in modern France, and Devon and Cornwall in southwestern Britain. Another minor source of tin is known to exist at Monte Valerio in Tuscany, Italy, but it wasn't substantial enough. It had been exploited by Etruscan miners since around 800 BC, and even then it was not a significant source of tin for the rest of the Mediterranean. The Etruscans themselves had to import additional tin from the northwest of the Iberian Peninsula and later from Cornwall. Thus, you either control a very wide area and make sure you maintain control, or your ability to equip your armies will depend on your trade routes, which, if disrupted by your enemy, could hinder or completely stop your production of bronze, which translates to no more weapons and armor for your troops. To equip a whole army in iron instead, you only need iron mines which, as we said, were quite common. Once you have the technology to smelt it and work it, with iron it will be a lot easier to maintain a continuous supply of armament. Not a small reason. So in other words, you don't need to trade for iron. And on the other hand, if you can disrupt the tin or copper sources of your enemies, you have an endless supply of weapons and armor, while they don't. Another reason is, well, carburized iron, in other words, steel. Steel is an alloy of iron and carbon in any amount up to 1.7% as an essential alloying constituent. So it's a metal-non-metal -metal alloy, remember how instead bronze is a metal-metal combination. And many iron sores that were found during, for example, the Roman era were in fact low-carbon steel. Given, in order to see high carbon steel, very well made blades, we'll have to wait for the Middle Ages. But still, for these two reasons, iron being easier to can buy and it being a transition metal towards steel, it became the preferred metal over bronze and it ignited a whole new iron based world. All right, noble ones. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up. And if you're yet not yet members of this community, become a noble one. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.